Hi there, my name is Houston. I'm one of the co-founders of Character Strong, and I just want to show you this short video to give you an overview of the elementary toolkit we call Purposeful People. Now, a couple of uh, pre-corrections. The reason we call it Purposeful People and not Character Strong is because we operate uh, in districts, pre-K through 12th grade. And if you call it the same thing all the way through, then students get sick of it. Even if it's different content, uh, sometimes they'll think it's gonna be the same, and so they automatically dismiss it. So, our content is called Purposeful People. Uh, we operate pre-K through fifth grade, focusing on social emotional learning and character development across 10 different traits. It is built with a toolkit model in mind because what we've learned is that the mutually adaptive approach is actually more effective in the elementary world than the prescriptive curriculum approach. So giving uh, staff in their classroom more autonomy over how they integrate it and more flexibility across an entire school, uh, which is why we built it with 10 traits in mind. So you'll see here on this overview page, that we operate with these 10 traits right here. Uh, and these traits were um, not pulling out of thin air. They were, came from survey data from adults, from staff, from students, from families, talking about what do you want more of in yourself or more in the students that you serve or your family members. And these 10 rose to the surface. Courage, respect, perseverance, gratitude, honesty, kindness, empathy, responsibility, cooperation, and creativity. Do you have to integrate all of these into your school? Not necessarily, but you can choose the ones that feel most relevant to you uh, or what your school needs most of the time, or even integrate it into things that you're already focusing on on your campus. Uh, what we believe in very deeply is holistic change, that this shouldn't just be a once a week classroom thing, that this work is for all of us. So let's take a look at empathy as an example. Uh, let's start with our staff challenges. We call these purposeful pursuits. They are practical ways for uh, adults in the building to role model the kind of things that we want to see in our young people. Dr. Clayton Cook, who we work with out of University of Minnesota, my favorite line from Dr. Cook when it comes to implementation, he says, when it comes to school culture change, we are first and foremost in the business of adult behavior change. So uh, if we're going to role model this, we need practical ideas on what it can look like. So here for each trait, you'll find practical strategies for the adults in the building to put it into action themselves. That said, uh, it can't just be adults in a building, but what about adults at home, family members? Well, we have tools uh, for families, uh, letters home, that are broken up by sort of age group, and these have an explanation of what we're talking about for that time period. If you're talking about empathy, as an example, conversation starters, questions you can ask, uh, books you could read, uh, read uh, for your own reading as adults, um, so not just books for your students, but what can we learn to be more empathetic as parents or family members? And then we also have purposeful pursuits for families as well. So practical ways to put empathy into action at home as a family so that we're role modeling it at home as adults and bringing our young people into that process as well. Uh, you can download that letter home in English or in Spanish. It's a front to back PDF that you can send out digitally or print out to send out physically. Where else do we integrate? Well, on the playground. Uh, now, whether you're coming back virtual or in person, lots of different ways to think about this, but we know that a lot of behavioral issues happen on the playground, and it's also prime opportunity to teach some of these skills. So we have some practical ways to integrate empathy on the playground. You'll see another resource here, our reading list with curated books um, set up developmentally. Uh, with links in order to purchase them and little descriptions about what they're back. Each of these are about, um, and each of these are practical ways to integrate empathy into your reading list. One other resource before I show you the classroom content itself is we have this page filled with resources, uh, including implementation guides that'll show you how to integrate or implement this work uh, in a daily model, a flexible model, as well as a weekly model, depending on what your schedule allows for. We have some pre and post assessments. And you come all the way down to the bottom, you'll see alignments. All of our content has been aligned to the ASCA standards, as well as um, CASEL uh, competencies. And down here for easy access, you can download uh, the posters and the images, which I'll talk about more here in just a minute. In fact, Let's dive in. One of our recent additions is pre-K. Uh, there's no additional charge for the pre-K content. This comes with the toolkit. 
and you'll find in the pre-K that it is broken up into four main categories. Starters, activities, enders, and a reading list separate. Um, so these starters are practical ways to integrate something like empathy into your morning circles, your morning routine. Uh, so there's some activities you'll see here. There's activities themselves, which are more designed to implement into any given day or week uh, to integrate empathy as um, more of a lesson plan. There's practical ways to close down each day. And all the way at the bottom, you'll see books with an empathy theme. And not only is there a link to the book, but at the pre-K toolkit, there's also activities related directly to the book to tie the reading into an experience around empathy. The classroom components are broken up into K2 and 3.5, so they're developmentally appropriate. And it's broken up into what we call our serve model. The serve model is just the simplest way I think about it. It's like a little color-coded notebook for your brain to easily take all the content we've created and figure out and find what is most relevant to you most quickly. So the S in the serve model stands for start intentionally. Uh, and we believe that we can start the month, the week, and each day intentionally related to whatever trait is at hand. So this is the K2 start intentionally portion of the toolkit. You'll see we always start by defining the word each week, putting forward a different image to share with our students to spark conversation around empathy. This is one of my favorites, the sloth, uh, showing the cheetah that we have different skills and the cheetah trying to learn or adapt. Lots of different ways this can be interpreted and students are always brilliant in sharing those things. Um, there's line art, so you can use them as coloring uh, books or options. Um, and then you come down here to each day, um, there's a discussion around a quote. So it's not a different quote each day, but rather a quote that gets carried out over the course of a week so you can dive deeper into it, unpack it a bit more. These quotes were intentionally designed um, to represent a lot of different diverse voices and perspectives. So you would, um, for each quote, you'd see that there is, day one is about defining any keywords or vocab, day two is about biography, and day three and day four are reflection questions. So you'll notice a whole lot of different uh, voices and faces, making sure we intentionally bring forward people's imagery so you can see these people and all the diverse uh, perspectives that they represent. Come down here to engage relationally. Uh, this part of the toolkit are 10 to 20 minute activities and one to 10 minute activities. So practical ways to incorporate something like empathy into just meaningful, quick, more short form play. Uh, so you'll see some activities here, 15 to 20 minutes is this one, but you come down here and this is an eight to 10 minute as an example. Respond with empathy are ways to make sure that we're adapting and meeting the needs of our students where they are at. So sometimes students need a mindful moment, sometimes they need a brain boost, and all of those tools are built right in here. So you'll see up top some mindful moments with some links to some videos, some practical exercises, some brain boosts for kids, including videos and songs, all of these easily adaptable to that online learning if that's where you're uh, living right now. And then the Respond with Empathy component also has a few scenarios to practice uh, putting this into action in our real life. The V in the Serve model stands for Values Practiced Consistently. This is your most traditional version of a lesson because it includes some experiential component as well as the discussion piece to unpack the learning. So a lot of different activities here. Here's one of my personal favorites called Shadow and Super Selfies where students have an opportunity to draw their super self and their shadow self and talk about what it means to have both of those inside of us. Is it necessarily a bad thing to have a shadow selfie? Why is it important to talk about or think about those things? What brings out our super self? What brings out our shadow selves? And how does understanding that in ourselves and in other people help us be more empathetic? And the E in the surf model is exit intentionally. Uh, these are, if we're gonna start intentionally, these are ways to end the month end the week, and end each day. So practical strategies to incorporate these into your morning meetings, into your closing circle. Um, the point is this, tons of tools to weave this into the fabric of what we do instead of having it feel just like one more thing. It's like, okay, now it's time for social emotional learning or character development. What if we were to integrate it into all that we do? And there's lots of plans, 
one of the questions we get most often, does that mean that this is K2? Does that mean that we repeat uh, these things year to year and can see the same stuff? Well, it can mean that if you choose it to be. Right? We could revisit this image. Let's say I see it in kindergarten. I could come back to it again uh, in second grade. My belief is that it is helpful to be reminded of this and to realize that the way I look at this in kindergarten might be different from the way I look at it in second grade. That said, those resources I shared earlier, earlier including this implementation plan up top, will make sure that um, while it's designed as a toolkit so you can choose your own adventure, we've also provided a ton of guidance to make sure that you never have to repeat an activity if you don't want to along the way. So that work's been, that legwork has um, at least been recommended for you, so it can remove some of that burden on uh, your workload. Um, and that said, that is all available for each of these traits on the side here. So people are asking, how do we do this in our virtual learning environment? Well, what I love about um, a lot of the way the toolkit is built, it is already ready for the virtual environment. You can lead conversations around empathy um, in, by simply sharing your screen like I am now. Here's the definition. Here is a video, and you come down further, here are the images, I can project, we can have this conversation. Uh, they're all built right in, so you can use it as you go. Brene Brown, one of my heroes, sharing that quote, and then you can share. Day one, here's the vocab, day two, so on and so forth. But what about some of these more mm, experiential activities? How do we adapt some of those? Well, we're gonna provide a few recommendations, at least one per trait, on how you can build those out. But the way that we like to uh, at least role model, let's take for example, uh, toss the feelings, which is an activity out of the K through two empathy toolkit right here. I'll pull it up on the screen just like this. And you'll notice that this is about having a beach ball with feelings words on different colors so that if we pass it to a student, they look at the word that's next to their thumb and they say, okay, sad. Now give an example of when you feel sad so that we can increase our emotional literacy. How could we possibly adapt that to a virtual world? Well, what if we created a beach ball that we can show in a slideshow like this and have students select their own color? So let's say I select this purple. Afraid. I use afraid in a sentence and I can click back here. And it brings me back to the beach ball yellow, excited. And let's role model this with a different activity. Um, here's one of my favorite from the Courage Toolkit. It's called Courageous Countdown. Students can choose a number. Let's say we choose six, and we do full arm circles. Uh, let's say if we choose four, we do shoulder wiggles. <laughs> you get the point. There's lots of ways to take these otherwise in-person activities, adapt them to virtual, and we're going to provide a lot of uh, practical role modeling to make that easier for you. A couple other fun things just to share with you. Uh, knowing that the world has changed a lot as we're coming into this brand new school year. Uh, one of the things that we've gone to work is to make sure that um, if you're doing some of that intentional equity work in your school, we believe very deeply that those conversations shouldn't just be relegated to a handful of activities. It should be woven into the, woven into the very fabric of what we do. And if you're not doing the adult work first, then our recommendation is don't start to do the student work yet. So make sure we get those adults supported. And as we're doing that, well, guess what? Every one of these traits relates to the conversations around social justice. And so we've created a guide that, hey, if you want to check out those quotes from the Dalai Lama or Maya Angelou, um, you can click right there and it'll bring you to the page where some of those things live. So we've pre-built that out for you uh, to hopefully showcase how you can weave conversations around social justice or equity right into the fabric of the toolkit. That said, we've continued to try, try to do some of those work, that work even on a bigger level. Uh, back in June when the hashtag Amplify Melanated Voices was going around, we went to work trying to increase the number of illustrations in our toolkit by making sure we bring voices forward from some incredible black illustrators like Xpain here. You'll see some of these will be new in the toolkit um, as the new year starts. Uh, here's a guy named Damien, an incredible artist, um, some of his work coming in. Uh, so just so you know, that's some of the work we're trying to do to both support the conversations around social justice, as well as the realities I know many are facing around uh, virtual learning. We're here for you to support that work. Uh, we believe very deeply that this work is the foundational work 
to support students, especially during this time, a practical focus on those social emotional skills and those character skills that we know um, are not another thing on the plate, they are the plate. So if you're interested in any of this stuff, we'd love to support your school pre-K through fifth with the Purposeful People Toolkit. Can't wait to work with you very soon.